I'm Antonio Graceffo, this is Marshall Arts. Obviously, we're in Thailand, Taiwan. We're back with my favorite Chow Lian. Chow Lian, we're going to take care of all some more. This is the summer! Okay, we're just going to get me back. We're doing three minute speed rounds. Three minutes to do as many times as you can. San Kondo. San Kondo, San Kondo. Okay, so three minutes on, one minute up. Okay, how about that? Come on. Normally, when I'm training with the coach, we do bag sprints. They're only 30-second sprints, and you do five of them, and you will be just absolutely exhausted by the end of that. You start out hitting it really hard, and by the end, you're just throwing these 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 punches. It reminds me of that episode of Bugs Money where, like, he's chasing the mad scientist. Oh, oh my God! It's so exhausting. It goes from aerobic to anaerobic real quick. Mad scientist dropped a bottle of ether, and then like they're running in slow motion. Come back here, rabbit. But for whatever reason, this Jalian wanted to do a three-minute sprint. I've never done that in my life, and you just feel like death. You just feel absolutely like death. You're hitting it so slow. On any given day, you gotta figure out what Jason's doing. And today, you're doing that exercise, you really build up the muscles and your wind. And he's saying you gotta get your wind built up because the fight is, you know, 10 rounds, you gotta be in shape. So you start out hitting that thing hard, and next thing you know, you're hitting it like a little girl. Not even like one of my sisters. My sisters hit pretty hard. Okay. Sounds good. And then toward the end, I switch to hooks because hooks are just easier to throw. And I see like these kids that I train with, man, they, they just don't have the cardio and they can't hang with it. Later with the 30 second sprint, we, we did a lot better with that. He's saying if you work, work out really hard, use your energy in your workout, then when you're fighting, you won't get tired. Double 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 means uh, when you're fighting, you won't get tired. Double <laughs> fine. The shadow boxing that they do, they do it on a straight line back and forth across the room. It's a really good way to warm up and a good way to practice your techniques. I think though that fighters should really do shadow boxing in, in a circle. You should circle, you should actually picture a fight. But uh, anyway, that's up to the Jolly Ann how he wants to do it. Hit here. My hands are going to return here, and my face is going to be wide open. Wide open to get hit. Yeah, just come, 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 come. So he's not just talking about holding your hands up high. He's saying punching higher, punching. Gao yi dian, gao yi dian. He's saying it's very important if you practice every day, practice throwing the high punches. Practice high. Oh. Yeah. Okay. One day he was holding the mitts for me and he was holding them way up over his head and I was trying to figure out what he was doing. And I guess this was it. So the most important he's saying is get your hand up, get your hand back. Protect this part of your body. Protect yourself with your elbows. So this way you're protecting your head and protecting your body at the same time. And you just keep saying that it's really important to hit high. Usually coaches call it when they want you to hit the, the mitts. He doesn't call it, he just sort of holds them up. But the important thing for him is that he wants me to go high. You see how high he's holding them. Uh, 
One of the problems with training in Asia is getting good sparring. In places like uh, Thailand and Cambodia, I can get a lot of good sparring because those guys, even if they're only 55 kilos, man, they can just kick and fight so well. And you know, you can spar with them and get a lot out of it. And then uh, training in Thailand is particularly good because there's a lot of foreigners training in Thailand. So you can go in a gym and they may have another heavyweight. You know, you, you know, in Cambodia, there's times where I'm the only heavyweight in the country. And um, I frequently, like I'm the only heavyweight that's in the country on that day, on a given day. In uh, Thailand, I might be the only one at the gym at a given hour. But, uh, you know, if I come back later, there's another one or they'll find one or they'll find one at another gym. So I can spar with the Thai guys or Khmer guys, and that's good for me. And then I can also find other foreigners, big guys to train with, spar with. The problem in Taiwan is that the locals just don't have the skills. There has, is not a tradition of fighting arts in Taiwan. The leading martial arts are Kung Fu and Tai Chi, Taekwondo. So there is no tradition of fighting. They've never had much of a... Uh, amateur boxing scene there isn't really pro boxing so even the recent MMA competitions that they've had were organized by foreigners the bulk of the participants were foreigners and the Taiwanese who participated weren't particularly good because their background was Taekwondo or Judo and um, I don't think there were any fights in that where they mixed where they had like a foreigner fighting a Taiwanese part of that's because of weight but part of it is just the disparity of, of technique in the whole country of Taiwan, there's one kickboxing gym located inside of a like an MMA gym in uh, Kaohsiung, and there's one in Taipei, and I believe there's one in Shinshu, and that might be it in the whole country, and of course they're all owned and run by foreigners. As far as me sparring with this kid, I, I really didn't want to spar with him, um, but I had no choice. There's just nobody for me to spar with, so I'm sparring with him, I'm taking it easy trying to help him. Now what he's doing wrong is number one he's really angry so once you get angry you're definitely gonna lose. He's throwing wild crazy punches and once you're doing that you're definitely gonna lose. You need to throw straight controlled punches. Throw your punches the same way you practice them. Now he, didn't, he never practiced throwing crazy wild punches so why is he doing it now? But this is really common for people who don't know how to fight. He's trying to take my head off with every one of those punches and actually what's happening is because he's trying to take my head off the likelihood of him taking my head off is uh, uh, pretty minimal and the other thing is they haven't done a lot of clinch training now because of the, the arts that I've done which are more uh, more all-inclusive arts I'm used to clinching and then throwing from the clinch and then here I had to stop myself from throwing once I got the guys in the clinch and this kid is just going crazy he's throwing wild punches wild wide punches and I'm just throwing straight punches and I'm just taking it easy I'm kind of hanging back and uh, you can see I haven't sparred in a long time and I've been in Taiwan almost a year and haven't sparred at all I'm very stiff I don't feel good I'm not moving well I'm not sparring well what else you can learn when when you're sparring take it easy on your partner don't hurt each other you're there to learn throw good straight punches work on your combinations work on your techniques move around now, after this kid got hurt, he was bleeding, and the coach made him go on. Now, some coaches do that because it's a way of teaching the guy to fight through the pain, push through the pain. I'm not sure how I felt about that. I, I might have let him just stop, but, again, that, that's up to the coach, and, you know, I'm not there to direct the team or decide what they're supposed to do. I'm just a student. <laughs> Hey, I'm Antonio Bricepo from Thailand, Taiwan. It's Martial Arts Odyssey. As always, get in the gym, do your sets, do your reps, do your road work. And please, say a prayer for the people of Shine State.